Hey, what's going on? This is Cosplay Guy One Fun. Like now, just kick off the year. I thought maybe instead of just cosplays, help life, and I thought maybe since this is a new year, I can try some new stuff. So today, since it's 2018, World War One ended almost 100 years ago. I know this is a little different, so I'm gonna try to make a British World War One stew. And back then, they didn't have MREs, C rations. Often, they would either have the <clears throat> the field kitchens for the quartermaster corps. But since this was World War One, with gas, artillery, machine gun fire, and horrible weapons, most troops had to learn how to make their own food or preserve it. And often, most common thing the British would make would be a stew. And over the course, they'd learn how to preserve their food better. So now, I decided maybe I can try and make a stew myself because I love British military history. And I thought, I'll make it. So this is what I got. I got carrots. Often it would be dried, but most British troops would raid from French farms. A couple turnips, or sometimes they use onions and potatoes. So, but in this recipe, I found online, I'm gonna use turnips. Corned beef, which I wish it was British, but it's from Brazil. Uh, often bread, but biscuits, or hardtack, AKA tooth dollars, worm castles, because this stuff would be so tough that most people would break their teeth eating us. A couple condiments, powdered mustard, HP sauce. And I wish I could Recreate in the field, but the guy who owns this cabin would probably kill me for digging a trench. So let me prepare this. Now, what we're going to do is often when the British soldier would get time off, he got about an hour or so. But in this case, since the recipe is a little big and I didn't want to spend like too much, I'm going to make a slightly larger stew. Often they'd make it in their little dish tins, but I'm making enough soup for about four people. And I'm just heating up the ingredients. The water, slice up carrots. Often they just get a couple dry ones. Next up is gonna be turnips. And the corned beef would often be opened up last. And as this would be boiling up, the stew would be starting to boil, you'd smash biscuits up as a thickener so instead of water to be a little more good and I'm going to give a little taste test of this powdered mustard see if I can... uh, I don't know how people can eat this stuff and HP sauce which would make a great taste so I got my water boiling now I'm gonna see if I can get this aligned and dang it, I wish I had a cameraman. There you go, now I'm gonna slice up the turnips. You wanna make it Soldiers would have to make this as small as possible so they can cook faster, thoroughly, and they would be able well, to enjoy it instead of having to shovel it in or, worst case, chuck it away and their buddy would be mad. I don't really get to eat turnips much or this kind of weird homemade stuff. But on my personal research, I've always wanted to figure out like, what these guys ate. Instead, I just had to learn like all about machine guns and rifles and battles and tanks. And I already know that stuff. Now the other one. And what's interesting is the military back then, they got alcohol rations. They would literally get a couple, British would get a couple tablespoons or servings of rum to dull their nerves of stuff like trench and shock or bleh, no shell shock but the interesting is this continued on with the Royal Navy 
So what happened is that they would get a little grog every day so they can help with vitamin deficiencies. But by 1974, they done away with it because they worried that all the rum rations would literally affect their with small hand operations. But I've read about that the US Navy does like steel clad uh, beaches, which means they get a couple beers a day for one day for every three months or so on ship. Now done with that, I can... Oh my gosh, I don't know how to open this thing. There we go. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I don't know how these people, how British soldiers open corned beef. Oh no, my corned beef is all is trapped in there forever. Okay now, since the Poulton broke off, I ran out, grabbed my utility knife, jabbed this crap out of this, mushed it up, and now the water's beginning to boil. And yes, I am not using I'm not using the campfire, I'm just using a stove. And we make a cup of tea, because it's the British. And I'm going to cheat again too with a microwave because I am lazy. Now that the water's beginning to boil, you will begin to pour the vegetables in. You don't want to put it in too fast. And as you go along, you add you would add water to your canteen. Because as the water boils off, then you have to mash the corned beef, which would help. Make it a nice, thick... I don't want to splash. There we go. Let that heat up for a little bit. And make, remember, I'm making enough for about four people. And the guy who runs this place wants some. Now, we gotta thicken it, so we're gonna use wheat biscuits. These are a little more like a cookie, but it's the closest thing you can get to heart attack without baking. Heart attack was common in British American because this, it preserved well, especially at sea, you could literally preserve this for months on end even years. The oldest literal hardtack cracker is from the 1850s and is still preserved in England. I'll begin boiling it up. At least it's, I'm doing this in the comfort of a cabin, not out in the trenches of World War One. And you gotta mush the corned beef up really fine because by then they had to learn they can't eat this stuff too much because too much tin meat would be very bad. You need to indigestion, diarrhea, vomiting. And there's a lot of preservatives in this, especially. Now we believe it's starting to heat up so now we're gonna add chunks of it as we go oh yeah that looks smells so yummy oftentimes they would one soldier would get half a tin and his buddy would get the other half corned beef Okay. Now 
Uh, let's just let this cook off, and later we'll add the biscuits, and I'll show you how it tastes. Mmm. After cooking for about 5-10 minutes, that looks somewhat edible, but when you're on the trenches, I think that's the best you can do. Now for a taste test. And I'm going to try a little bit of that Coleman's mustard. And one thing you want to add is a little bit of HP sauce. It's kind of like A1 steak sauce, but for the British. Uh, I'm kind of glad I did not. Don't, glad our troops today don't have to eat this stuff. Bon appetit. Or just chow down. It's doable, uh, but often you just gotta like shovel it in. Good thing I'm filming this in January when it's cold outside, so it's nice and hot. Now I think it's time I try Coleman's mustard. I've tried it once before and that is hot. So I gotta get right here, so let's go. Ugh. This is like wasabi or horseradish. But I Good gosh, why? Uh, uh, make sure you mix this up really well because you don't want this, if you get even a little bit of powder in your nose, you're gonna it's feel like eating wasabi, like a huge wad. Oh gosh. Uh, but uh, that's World War One food. I'll give you the recipe in the description below. And Happy New Year.